Hello and welcome. Now on my screen, you can see that I've got a big list of posts. I've got 79 posts. But what if I have 5,000 or 10,000 posts? I will definitely not want to keep them all on one page. And for this, I will want to use pagination. Now in Ruby on Rails, there are a few gems that offer the function of pagination, like will paginate or Caminero or more recently the gem page. Now, if we go to the gem page in GitHub, we will see that according to different metrics, the gem offers better performance than the other gems like will paginate and Caminero. And now we're going to try to install the gem and see how it works and try different options of customizing the gem. Now, there are already a few different YouTube videos uh, covering the gem, but I think we will go deeper in this one. So going down, we see this easy to use tab and here we have a link to quick start. So we are going to click the link and it brings us to the page uh, homepage. And here we are going to grab the gem page and add it to our gem file. So I'm going to the gem file. I will add the gem page and bundle. Next, we are going to need to include page backend in our application controller. So we're going to go to our application controller and we're going to include page backend. Okay, now we can start the server Rails S and we see that we can already add this uh, page wrapper for our list of posts. Now here is our list of posts and I'm going to go to our post controller and wrap it into page. So we will say add page comma posts, page, post order, created at descending. So I restart the server. Okay, expected page one in four, got six. I'll just try once again, I'll go to posts and it works. So you see, I definitely have already not 79 records in the list, I've got fewer. Let's display how many we've got in the list visible now. I will go to our posts index and here I will display how many posts we currently see on the page. I will say at posts.count. So how many posts we see now out of total posts. Okay, and now we see 20 posts out of 79. And we also want to have some kind of links to go to the previous post and to the next post. Well, for this, we're going to go into this uh, page documentation and we see this include page backend that we can add into our application helper. So let's do this. I will go to helpers, application helper, here we include page front end, and we can add some kind of page nav. Let's do this. So I'm going to our post index, and here I will add uh, page nav at page. Let's refresh, and you see it works. We have links to the previous page, to the next page. We can press on a specific page. So looks kind of nice. And you see we have this double uh, equals here, and it works the same with the word raw. Now, if we don't have double equals or the word draw, then it will display to us as plain HTML that we do not want. So we will have raw or double equals, it doesn't matter much. I'll display both just as an example. And you see we have links to previous and next post. So it looks nice. But where does this magical number 20 come from? We want to override it. Well, we can override it by setting the number of items we want to display directly in the index page like coma items, let's say we want to display five posts. So this way we are going to display five posts per page, but it still doesn't answer the question, where does this default number 20 come from? Well, it comes from the page.rb initializer. So if we go further, we will see that there is this page.rb file that is available in the GitHub repository that offers different options of customizing the gem. So now we're going to try to uh, customize the gem to our needs. So I will just copy the whole initializer and I will create it in our local initializers. So I will create a new file, page.rb. I paste it all here and here is our initializer. And we see on the very beginning, we have this default page variable item 20. So we have 20 items by default on a page. And let's try to change it. Let's make it uh, two items by default on a page. And I'm going to remove this uh, override items that we set in our controller. Just like this. And let's see. Okay, I need to restart the server because I added an initializer. And let's see. So now we have two posts per page. Looks good. 
And we set this uh, for all our pagination. So wherever we have pagination, we're going to have two posts uh, per page. But again, if we set uh, a quantity of items in a controller, in a specific uh, action in the controller, then it will override the page.rb initializer. And let's see some more options that we can add. So another option is page variable page. So it is the default page from which we want to start our pagination. For example, what if we want to always start from the third page, but not from the first page? I will start the server. Okay, I go to post and you see by default we are on the third page. Now it's not the best option in my opinion, but there might be some business cases where this would be required. Then there is something interesting like uh, cycle. So by default, uh, if we go to the server, and go to the last page. So I'm on the 16th page. The next button is not active. But if I make cycle true and start the server once again, then whenever we are on the last page, the next button is active and it brings us to the first page. So this way we can paginate in a cycle. Looks nice. Then another interesting thing we can do is uh, set the page param. For example, we want to have not uh, the word page visible here in the URL, but the word uh, list or the word uh, uh, what uh, uh, Zeta, for example. Let me just some random word Zeta. And now when I go to posts and I paginate, you see instead of the word uh, page, we have the word Zeta. So it's uh, another customization that you can do if you find it interesting in your particular application. Another thing we can do is uh, set this size. Now this is kind of interesting to understand. So this number is how many uh, pages we see on the very beginning. This is how many pages we see before the current post, after the current post and in the end. So let's uh, set this one for for one and start the server once again. I refresh. I will try to change something. Let's say I will make it one, two, two, one. So I expect to see one page on the beginning, two pages before the current post, two pages after, and one in the end. Let's go to the, let's say, seventh post. We see two pages before seven, two pages after seven, one in the end, and one on the beginning. Let's make it, for example, uh, one, 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 two. And it should give us uh, one page on the beginning, one before the current page, one after the current page, and two in the end. You see, it works. So you can customize it the way you like. But uh, in my opinion, the best option is something like one, two, two, one. Okay. And uh, let's see. I'll start the server. And... Uh, we have these uh, links, but they don't look really nice. What if we try to add some bootstrap style into them? Well, if we go into the page documentation, we see that we have these front-end extras and we can add some kind of front-end framework default CSS for bootstrap, Bulma, foundation, materialize, and uh, whatever. Let's try to add some front-end extras for page bootstrap. So I'm going to require page bootstrap but first I will need to also install Bootstrap in the application. I don't have it installed at the moment. So I'm going to go and have, have this guide, install Bootstrap 5. So we need to add these two YAM packages. Add Bootstrap, add the uh, Pope.js, and I'm going to add these two lines into application.js like this. And now we can start the server. And we should have Bootstrap already installed. You see, installing Bootstrap 5 without jQuery is really fast. So it is compiling the application. And you see, we now have Bootstrap installed. It has changed the CSS of the text and it has slightly broken our styles, but that is fine. So we have included the page extras Bootstrap into our application. And now we want to at the, the bootstrap navigation. So inside the page website documentation, we can go to extras bootstrap. And here we have this page bootstrap nav at page. Let's try to add this into our views. 
OK. Refresh. And you see, now we also have bootstrap navigation that looks really nice in my opinion. And actually we can uh, customize it even more. So uh, for example, we want to have this working in another language. We can go to page.rb and in then we have uh, some documentation for internationalization that is also faster than using the default Ruby Rails I18M. So for example, let's try to add the, the pagination in the German locale. I'll restart the server. And you see now it is in German, so looks nice. And uh, let's see what else we can add. For example, let's go to a page that does not exist. I will go to a page with a ridiculously big number and you see we get this page overflow error. Now to see how this overflow error appears, we can go to page overflow and here we have this uh, overflow extra. Now by default, it goes to an empty Oh, to exception, and we can override it. For example, it will bring us to an empty page if there is no content on this page. So I go. Uh, let's see. I still get the overflow error. I will restart the server. Okay, it doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, it doesn't fail because I did not require page extras overflow just here. So now it should work. I restart the server. And you see, now it brings us to an empty page without any posts. And if I add something like uh, last page instead of empty page, then it should uh, automatically show us the content of the last page instead of uh, showing uh, just an empty page. So. I added last page, I'm restarting, and you see I'm on a ridiculously big page, but I see the content from the last page. So it also makes the user experience better. And uh, what else would we like to add? For example, we want to uh, be able to let our users to choose how many items they want to see per page. Now, this is also an interesting thing that we can do. For this, we would go here to this feature extras, and here we have uh, page extras items. So we would let our users decide how many items they want to see per page. By default, we are going to name these items, and by default, the maximum amount that they can select is 100. Okay, so let's uh, try to see if it works. I'm going to restart the server, and I'm going to give the users a couple of links so that they can decide how many items they want to see per page. I'm going to create a link to, uh, let's say, 33 items per page. We'll have a link to posts path with the param that is going to be uh, items 33. Let's see if this works. So I press 33. And uh, does it work? It uh, does not work. Why doesn't it work? Let's go to our posts controller. And here you see we've uh, hard coded this number in our application controller. So let's not hard code it. Let's uh, let the user decide. But by default, we will have uh, how many? We will have, uh, yeah, let it be two items by default, for example, on one page. So Let's say I go to the polls and by default we have two items. I press 33 and now we have 33 items on the page. Let's make it look a bit better. So I will have a, a link to unless current 233. So if uh, it is not 33 at the moment and we will have this link active. And let's say we'll have options for 10 items per page and 50 items per page. Okay, so I refresh, I go to posts, and now by default we have two, but we can select to have 10 items per page and select to have 50 items per page. So it works really well. Well, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the page gem, and I encourage you to go through the documentation and find a lot of other interesting stuff on your own. 
So have a nice day and enjoy learning.